Welcome back to the One Chart at a Time video series. I'm your host, John Schwabish. And on today's episode, we continue our quick path through qualitative data visualization. And so today, we're going to talk about sort of combining different elements into a matrix or a list of qualitative data. And one of the places that I go to to see great examples of this is the Texas Tribune, which is an online newspaper run uh, out of Texas. And I've used uh, some of their work in my forthcoming book. I've included some of the images and screenshots and examples from some of their great work. And so I thought it would be useful to reach out to them to see if they would like to talk about some of their work. And fortunately, Darla Cameron agreed to come on the show. And so she's gonna talk about a particular project where they combined qualitative information, quantitative information, and, all, uh, and also icons and colors and text to create sort of a long list of political leaning, political positions in Texas politics. So Darla, this one's over to you. Hi, I'm Darla Cameron, the data visuals editor of the Texas Tribune. Presenting data in a matrix or a list is a great way to allow direct comparison between two things or organize tabular data by category. One example of this that the Texas Tribune published in 2017 is this graphic showing how the Texas Democratic and Republican Party platforms compare. In primary elections in Texas, voters find a long list of political statements at the bottom of their ballots. These are the Republican and Democratic Party platforms, and they're finalized at the insidery state party conventions. But for the average voter, the only time they see what each party envisions as the future of Texas is at the voting booth. And if you vote the same party's ballot every primary, you'll never see the other party's platform. For this graphic, the Texas Tribune wanted readers to see the party platforms for high profile issues side by side. We also wanted to show how average Texans feel about these issues using public polling data. The RTAC section of the graphic adds further analysis from Tribune reporters on how or why the party's thinking on each issue has evolved over time. And we added icons to each section for visual cues. Charts like this require a very tight edit. They can easily get unwieldy and long. Editing the words in a graphic is just as important as editing the visualization. It's also key to focus on design for small screens. A table or side-by-side -side comparison that looks great on desktop won't read so well on mobile. This kind of chart is also a good way to demystify complex processes for readers. Tables and lists enable us to sort items by their category or status, like bills during a legislative session or environmental rollbacks by the Trump administration. These charts can walk readers through the process of governing. When a politician proposes legislation or says something has changed, that doesn't mean that it's all the way over. Thanks. And thanks, Darla, for that great summary. I really love that project from the Texas Tribune. I've actually included a screenshot of it in my forthcoming book, so I hope you'll check that out. And I hope you will go check out the Texas Tribune and check out all of the great work that they do uh, down in the state of Texas. So until next time, this has been the One Chart at a Time video series. Stay tuned for more videos coming up in the next few days.